Terry and Barbie Franklin, founders of Worship City and the Tennessee Prayer Coalition. And we are so glad that you are here on this warm Nashville night. Some of you have come from all over the place. We have some amazing leaders here tonight to lead you through this program, and it's just going to be great. Before we begin, let's thank the Lord for his faithfulness to us by singing. Could you? Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great. this night. I thank you for each one that's come out tonight. And Lord, we just pray that Jesus would be glorified through everything that's said and done here on Le Legislative Plaza. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And we're going to have a program here that you're going to love during this call to repentance, fasting, and prayer. In this month of July, we've all been hearing stories. Have you heard stories? Have you seen things on the, on the web pages and it's just been amazing. We've been hearing from Representative Fritz as they've been on the ground. But we've all been hearing s stories of seeing God's glory and presence revealed among us as the whole body of Christ. And we've all unified together in this unprecedented moment in history. You realize this has never happened. This is amazing. We're making history through this. Thank you, Jesus. All glory be to the Lord. We believe it's fitting to share some pertinent scriptures here at the very beginning. And we would like uh, Destiny Nicole Erickson of Lebanon, Tennessee, founder of Smash, to come up and read. Then Thomas Wyatt Cook of Johnson City, founder of Adoration Life, and he's a part of our Tennessee Prayer Coalition gathering gatherings. And then Lee Gullett Smith of Clarksville and the Montgomery County prayer group that's been praying for over a decade now, every month, a couple of times. Come on up and share. Go ahead, share. Hello, I'm going to read Psalms 24, which is a wonderful example of the heart posture of Tennessee. Psalms 24 says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend to the mountain of the Lord? 
who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from their God, their Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek Him, who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is He, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, He is the King of glory. This is John 17, 18 through 23. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, Father, how we love you tonight. How we worship you tonight. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords and worthy of all praise and honor. Father, your word says in John 8, 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And boy, does our state and our nation need to know your truth. But Father, your word says in John 8, 31, if you abide in my word, then you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. It is only through your word, your precious, glorious word, you tell us in Isaiah, Though the grass may wither, the flowers fade, the Word of God stands eternal. And it's because you, you are the Word. It says in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word is God. And Father, we worship you because you are God. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Destiny, Thomas, and Lee. We praise God for you. Well, tonight we feel it's appropriate to invite Marlene Tidwell to come and introduce our honorable government officials who initiated House Joint Resolution 803, the call to repentance, fasting, and prayer for July. Marlene has been our friend for decades, and we have seen her faithfully lead efforts of prayer in the Capitol through the Tennessee Governmental Prayer Alliance, the Tennessee Prayer Caucus, as well as coordinate the Governor's Prayer Breakfast as director for 15 years. Come on up and, and uh, introduce and honor our officials. I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you to Senator Mark Pody and Representative Monty Fritz, not just for birthing Pray for Tennessee from the HR 803, but also for seeing it to completion. Now, we all know that they do not want recognition. So Mark, you can see me after this. You guys can chastise me and rebuke me. But for now, we want to say thank you. I just sense tonight that there is a symphony, if you will, of a song that is being echoed throughout every county 
in this state right now in the remnant of God's people. It's going from Memphis to Bristol, from the foothills of the Smokies to the rolling hills of Tennessee with one simple message. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your perseverance. Thank you for every mile traveled, every prayer prayed, and every seed planted, and for your wives and your staff. This has not gone without notice. We all know that when God does something, He speaks it to many people. It's not about one person, one ministry, or one church, but He uses His vessels. And He used Monty and Mark to shepherd this from the halls of government. And then finally, you know, we never know the impact of our prayers this side of eternity. But I am confident tonight that history will record Tennessee led the way that changed the course of history. So from Tennessee, we love you, we honor you, and we bless you. Senator, Senator Pody and Representative Fritz. Can we have Representative Fritz come on up and share? I apologize. I was just meeting two new friends, Solomon and Matthew Henry back there, and we were focused. So let's give those two really good-looking young men back there a big hand for coming out. I, I, I will be honest with you folks, I'm, I'm somewhat overwhelmed by this at this point in time. Um, I don't know uh, what to offer other than some scripture, just to be honest with you. Uh, God has given us a tremendous journey together, and I look around, I see folks from Blount County, Claiborne County, Knox County, Roan County. Um, oh my goodness. Yeah, Bradley County. I forgot Bradley County. I'm going to get something thrown at me. I shouldn't have started that all the different counties. I'll get in trouble for that. Uh, but I see folks that I've gotten an opportunity to make friends with. Um, this whole going to 95 counties has been an absolute blessing for Denise and I. We, uh, this morning after we finished with County 95 in, in Williamson County, um, our common thought was just, this has went by too fast. Uh, because the ability to see honest to goodness from Memphis to Mountain City, God's people with their hands raised. God's people on their hands and knees begging for His mercy on our land. Other politicians, um, county executives, county mayors, county commissioners confessing their sin and saying, God, forgive me. It's been a beautiful, beautiful thing. I saw some, we were, uh, the other night, I, I, we have some friends here from Warren County, and I won't point at them, uh, but they knew who I'm talking about. And we, in Warren County, it had rained cats and dogs, and the, and the folks in the court there were nice enough to let us go inside so we didn't get rained on. And um, when we got to Coffee County, that wasn't an option, and I had a, told them when they got here, I said, I hope you weren't bringing the rain with you tonight. Uh, because it rained, you could hear the dogs barking as they come down. It was raining cats and dogs. And um, there were people there, redeemed children of the Lord Jesus Christ, that were honestly dancing and praising in the rain. And I don't think, I saw what, my wife got a picture. We've got some really great public servants here. And I, I, won't, I won't try to mention them. I won't get myself in trouble like I did with the counties, because if I... I'll get myself in trouble if I do that. But I, I just went, there was a most beautiful photograph of Senator Bowling, and she's here somewhere. Um, and it started raining, and she just did this. It was a beautiful, beautiful. Um, and so I go to the rain before I go to the scripture in, in a little bit, and to be honest with you, I've lost all context of what I was supposed to do here tonight, so we're just going to go with it. Um, but to see God's people weep because everybody knows something bad is upon us. And you know, if you've been to one of these gatherings, you've heard me say we can't legislate ourselves out of this hole, we can't spend ourselves out of this hole, can't even vote ourselves out of this hole. 
uh, we need a miracle, we need Jesus. That is the absolute truth. And, and somehow, somehow we were able to get words together that convey that, that truth in just a document written by Balaam's donkey and his helpers. And, and uh, so, it, the beauty of the journey, um, my goodness, I'm speechless. As I look back across the 95 counties, somebody asked me a minute ago, where were you at last night? I said, I don't know. I'd have to look at my phone to tell you. Uh, I, do, I don't remember. But I remember the faces and I remember the, the, the bent knees. I remember the prayers. Nothing in the resolution talks about church unity. And it didn't. I didn't start that. It wasn't something I spoke about. But in most of the crowds where, where somebody really took this on and owned it in the counties, Yet significant number of people per capita come out, I think. And unity of the church. There's a recognition within God's people that the infighting is of the devil. And he's doing that to keep us off balance so that he can, can continue to ruin our children and us, adults, and teach all these pagan falsehoods. Uh, we had... Um, we had folks, you know, that we're hung up on this whole separation of church and state life, friends. And lots of our churches, I'm just going to be real, lots of our churches are hung up into that. Some of these seminaries must be teaching that. So you born, how many born again believers in the, yeah, so you need, you know, iron sharpens iron. I'm going to get in trouble with all the preachers now. If your preacher's telling you that you can't get involved in politics, you take him into the Word of God and tell him, that God did not abdicate His throne for politics, that you're expected to have a voice in politics in the state of Tennessee and in the United States of America, and you will not recoil from that again. Never again will you allow yourself to be silenced and shut down because of some crazy COVID scare. Never again will you allow that. Just as these communist Marxists said in that building every day when we're in session and spew their hate and their anti-God, anti-American stuff. You the church, every one of y'all that just raised your hand, you're going to have to stand on up. And you're going to have to fill that gap. And you're going to have to let your voice be heard in love, but in persistence and on the authority of, of God's Word. So, with that. I'll ask you to go with me for just a minute into Jeremiah chapter 2. And I'll read just a few verses to you and then offer a couple words and then I'll course correct Miss Barbie to whatever I need to, was supposed to do. Um, Jeremiah chapter 2, verse number 4. Hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, what iniquity have your fathers found in me that they are gone far from me and have walked after vanity and are become vain. Neither said they, where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, that led us through the wilderness, through the land of deserts and of pits, through the land of drought and through a shadow of death, though through a land that no man passed through and where no man dwelt. And I brought you into a plentiful country. Is that not Tennessee? Now he's speaking to the, to the Jewish nation here. But remember, God's nature doesn't change. We, we like to try to convince ourselves that that's Old Testament and God don't do things that way anymore. Hebrews 13.8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So he goes on to say, he says, I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. But when ye entered, ye defiled my land and made mine heritage an abomination. The priest said not, where is the Lord? And they that handled the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me. And the prophets prophesied by Baal and walked after things that do not profit. Where will I yet plead with you, saith the Lord? And with your children's children will I plead. And I'll skip down to verse 11. Hath the nation changed their gods which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. I can't think of any scripture that more defines what America has done. God raised us up out of the dust and made it a place where we could worship freely. 
He brought men here that wrote documents that said that we have been endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights, and among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And to secure those rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the government. And yet we have allowed ourselves to reach a point where many in politics today consider themselves the giver of your rights. That is a lie. And we should no longer stand for that. And we should politely and professionally and with the authority of God and the Constitution rebuke them when they start down that path. And you see, folks, the reason that's important is because if we allow ourselves to get on that slippery slope where our understanding of where our rights come from is eroded, soon we'll find ourselves in a more secular humanist environment where that those people who think they hold power will try to dictate to each and every one of you what you may and may not do. And ultimately, the goal is to not take your guns away from you. Ultimately, the goal is to not just kill the babies in the womb. Ultimately, the goal is to not perform only these hideous surgeries. Ultimately, it is not to shatter ban you on these, these silly uh, social media platforms. The end goal of all of this is that you cannot say Jesus. That is the enemy's goal in this. So with that, I would just offer you, stand in the gap. Repent, please, before it's everlasting too late. We don't know. I was just talking to a, a gentleman today. I don't know how many more chances we're going to get, but certainly God is giving us a chance here. Let your voice be heard. Hit your knees, please. Cry out to God. Ask forgiveness. I ask forgiveness. I've repented in front of 95 different counties. I do that again tonight here in front of the state capitol. My sin is enough to bring judgment on the state of Tennessee. My sins of omission. My failure to do and to be a light that Jesus Christ saved me to be is enough to bring judgment upon this land. I repent. I ask His forgiveness and yours. I ask you to do the same. And I ask you to call upon God for His mercy. We can't stand His justice. Like Manasseh, we have allowed innocent blood to flow in our streets. We have defiled institutions and allowed silly folks that don't have the authority to do so to redefine the institutions that God has named. And we have said idly by and allow that to happen. Shame on us. There's a sackcloth and ashes moment in that. But the celebration of tonight is that Jesus is listening. Yes. And just like in Zechariah 1, verse number 2, when He says, if you'll turn to Me, I'll turn to you. He's waiting tonight for every one, every single one of us to turn to Him. So I'll ask you to join me in doing that. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank God for courageous leaders. I mean, just give them a hand of applause for their courage. And Senator Cody, come on up. That my name might be there, but it was not just State Representative Bonnie Fritz. It was not just State Senator Mark Pody. In the Senate, I had help. I had State Senator Janice Bowling. I had State Senator Paul Rose. These are two praying Christians that we meet at the Capitol every week that we're in session and we pray. When we're not in session, we do it by phone call. I see Kelly Kiesling, State Representative Kelly Kiesling. I see Mike Sparks, State Representative. I see Ed Butler. It was a group of us. I'm gonna tell you, the reason that I'm gonna point this out, government is right there. If we look at where is the, the seat of government in the state of Tennessee, they call us the Bible Belt of this nation, Tennessee. And you know the Bible, the buckle of the belt is right here. 
And you've got government officials, all of us standing together and saying, this is not the end. We have been praying and fasting. For 30 days, we're not done. That's just a preparation. The question is, where do we go next? For decades, we've asked God to leave our government, to leave our classrooms. For the last 30 days, we have been humbly going around the state and asking for forgiveness from all of you, but mainly from God. And say, God, we're sorry. And for 30 days, we've been apologizing and humbly going and saying, God, we admit our sins. We are sorry. We are starting a new season. This season is where Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit is invited back into our government. He is invited back into our state. We ask him in our classrooms. This is not the end of July. This is the beginning of a new season in Tennessee. This is the season for our Lord Jesus Christ to reign. Publicly reign in government. Publicly reign right here in our hearts. It is up to us as Christians to let that shine. Darkness doesn't encroach. It's only because the light grows dim. That light is us. Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, is us. We are the church. It's time for us to shine. I want to thank so many of the ministries out here, so many of my Christian brothers and sisters. You all have been praying for a day like this. It's here. This reminds me of the Israeli... Of, the Jewish people, they were caught for 400 years. And they were waiting for the Exodus to go to the promised land. Think about where we are right now. We're about to enter the promised land. It is time for us to go out rejoicing and praising the Lord. Amen! Thank you, thank you, thank you, Senator Cody. Oh, we bless them all. And we are going to bring up, it, at the very end, we're going to bring up all the government officials that are here and pray for them. But um, right now, before we go uh, into our prayers of praise and thanksgiving, we want to also thank Monty Fritz's wife, Denise. Where are you? Where is she? Okay. <laughs> There she is. She's been trekking right alongside of, of uh, Representative Fritz, and we just thank God for her. She took a lot of pictures. I hope you know how to upload those, because we all want them. <laughs> we want copies. And um, thank you for your support and all the blessings that you brought, going county to county and meeting the people of Tennessee and praying prayers of repentance with them. But we also want to thank some people that were in the background. And uh, we know that Administrative Assistant, Legislative Assistant Nicole Ussery has been doing work every day, getting there super early, super late, doing Zoom calls with a lot of us leaders that are trying to put things together. And she's just tirelessly worked. And also, Debbie Stevens, where are you? Oh, she had to leave. Okay. We just need to thank her and, and praise God for her because she helped uh, a lot in, in this as well on the Zoom calls and everything. And this little pistol is an amazing lady. We thank God for you, Nicole. You've become a friend and I just love you to pieces. I'm threatening to take her from Monty, by the way, just want you to know. We were sitting, Representative Fritz and I were sitting in his office and we were getting close to the bill filing deadline for the 2024 legislative year and we had had 53 requests to carry legislation 
and members of the Tennessee House can only file 15 pieces of legislation each year. So we had tough, tough decisions to make. And we were agonizing over these decisions. And we had this HJR had been drafted for the special session in August, but we had been told we wouldn't be allowed to carry it because it didn't meet the scope of the call. So that was sitting on the side. So that really made 54 pieces of legislation. And we wrestled, didn't we, Representative? Where are you? Yeah, we wrestled with, with this decision. And we finally got to the place where we said, well, in the natural, this will never pass because I've been here for 12 years. It's one of the reasons I was assigned to Monty because he was a freshman and so they tried to pair an experienced LA with a new member. And I said, in my 12 years, I've had the blessing to work for believing members who have tried to pass other pieces of legislation that exalted Jesus and set Christian principles and they've never gone anywhere. And so, I said, I feel like I have a responsibility to tell you that if you file this, what the likelihood in the natural will be. And so he said, well, I just feel like we need to do it. So we laid hands on the bill jacket and we prayed for it and we gave it over to God and said, Lord, it's got to be you. And I will say that it was absolutely amazing. We went through subcommittee, no problem. We went through committee, no problem. <clears throat> we went through calendar and rolls, no problem. We got to the house floor and one of my responsibilities is to do research for Mommy and to help write, help write his talking points. And so I felt very convicted that you know we're called to be to be prepared to give an answer. So I wrestled, tried to think of every conceivable objection and question and write answers to those. And Representative Fritz took his binder and went up to the well and was all prepared to, to give an answer. And every time he tried to open his mouth, it was just like he was tongue-tied. And it was, it, was, it was not a comfortable situation for the representative. And I was watching from the office by Zoom and I was, I was like, oh man, Lord, you know. Well, when, he, when they, someone called for the question, and they took the vote, it was 82 members of the Tennessee House out of 99 voted in favor. That could only have been God. And so what I have been privileged to witness is God working through simple, humble obedience and no matter, you know, and saying, I don't care what the world says and what my mind says, we're going to do this. Yes. And so I am honored to have been partnered in this. And just, I'm so blessed by all of you answering the call and for the church coming together and for being, being willing to take a stand for our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nicole. Okay, is Vance Velio here? Did he end up making it? He wasn't sure he could. We just wanted to acknowledge him because he has been a powerful force in the office of, of the, the governor uh, doing uh, serving the body of Christ in the office of faith-based and community initiatives and has been a part of this as well. And we thank God for all the people. The, the salt and light, amen? 
You know, as Terry and I have traveled across the Tennessee and uh, met leaders, we have just been awestruck and we couldn't put them all on the program. But the last few decades, we've gotten to know some amazing leaders of prayer. And prayer is, has been going on for decades. In fact, you know, this is just, this is a culmination of many, many decades of prayer. And people working hard across the state. And one of those leaders is Pastor Michael and Keziah Obi. Would you come up here? Uh, they are uh, the national coordinator and uh, faith uh, field director, sorry, for the African Strategic Leadership Prayer ne Network. Beautiful uh, husband and wife team. They are originally from Nigeria, but 30 years ago we got lucky and they moved to Tennessee and they make their home in Cleveland and they're pastors at Mount Zion Prayer Center and uh, in Cleveland, Tennessee. And we first met them, though, while we were leading worship for the National Prayer Assembly in D.C. They uh, keep themselves very busy going many different places, and God has used this beautiful couple. And, in fact, Keziah uh, has been the national uh, coordinator for the Wailing Women of America. So these people are prayer warriors. Yeah. So we're just asking them to come on up and pray a prayer of praise over all that you've been hearing today, please. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we stand before you today. God of the universe, God of all the earth, master of creation, in your mercy and in your grace, you remember Tennessee. You remembered America. You decided to come again and draw us back to yourself. We come on bended knees this evening. We come to declare you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You sit above the highest heavens. Come again upon this land. Come and rule and reign over America. We declare your lordship and your sovereignty. Who is like unto thee, O God? God. There is no God beside you. Worthy of worship, worthy of praise, worthy of adoration. Oh, the lion of the tribe of Judah, we hail you. We hail you, King of Kings. We hail you tonight. We say you are worthy. Thank you for what you are doing. Glorify yourself. Glorify your name and let the people praise thee. Let all the people praise thee. Let the heavens rejoice and the earth be glad because the Lord, you are king and you are worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Father, we continue to worship you. We have gathered from the 95 counties of our state because our eyes have witnessed a miracle. We have come to this capital center to give glory to you, to give praise to you, to honor you before your open heaven upon us today. Father, we have come to praise you for what you have done. Thank you for this miracle of repentance. Father, if your church has called for repentance, it looks normal. But it is your servants, the Mordecais of our generation, yes. that have called us for repentance. And Father, we thank you because repentance is an answer to our prayers. Father, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for breaking our hearts with that which has broken your heart. We thank you for opening the eyes and the hearts of Tennessee to lead the way in a humble approach to that which calls your heart back to us. So today we give you glory. Yes. Thank you for our Senator Pudi. Yes. Thank you for our house rep, O oh God, Fresh. Yes. Thank you for this Mordecai of our time. Yes. Father, we are thanking you because we know you have heard our cry. Yes. We know because you've answered God, you will do, you will surprise us. We look for your surprise. We kneel before this ground. We consecrate this time of thanksgiving for what you do. We know this day is a day of history. 
receive all the glory, receive all the honor, and take us to the next step. And to you be all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Oh, well, you know, when somebody's been uh, before the Lord, don't you? And these are prayer warriors. Another one of the treasured pastors in our Tennessee uh, group of prayer uh, is Bishop Joseph Rukisha. He's from the Mahanaim Revival International Ministries, which really means city of refuge. And he is a survivor of the massacres from the militia in the Congo decades ago. And he began to, uh, to minister to the refugees. And in Uganda, he began to counsel those that had been wounded and hurt like he had. And he rose above and he led this congregation right there at the refugee camp. And then when he was able to come here with some of his uh, people, uh, uh, almost 10 years ago, almost a decade ago, he began to lead a church of the refugees and now more and more have come. And we have been there. And I'm telling you, they can sing. And I can tell you, they can dance. And I could not keep up with them. They sing so beautifully. And uh, I just want you to welcome here tonight, Pastor uh, Bishop Joseph Rukisha. <laughs> Thank you. Pray a prayer of thanksgiving for us. Lord Jesus, we are here this evening to praise your name, to glorify your holy name for the wonders and the miracles that you have done in this nation. We praise your name. Your word says that where there is no vision, people perish. But we thank you as you spoke in the, the hearts of our leaders so that they could bring people together so that we have to humble ourselves to turn from our wrong ways to seek your face so that we can ask for your willingness. God, you are merciful. Thank you. We believe in your word. We believe in your promise. As we have been here all the month of July, seeking your faith, praying, fasting, calling upon your name, we believe that you heard our voice, you heard our, our prayers, and now you are going to forgive our sins and uh, heal our land. Thank you, God, for you are promise keeper of this word. Bless our nation, bless our state, bless our leaders who have this vision to bring people together so that we may kneel and call upon your name. We are here to thank you. We are here to glorify you. We are here to praise you as you are going to perform miracles and wonders. Let the state of Tennessee uh, become the source of revival in this nation and in the world. We praise your name. Let this state be the role model of all, all states so that people come together to pray and to glorify your name and uh, to seek your will. Lead us into your ways, lead us into your holiness, lead us into your faithfulness. We thank you, God, as you continue to bless us, to bless our leaders, to bless our nation. In Jesus' name I pray and I believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Let's sing something, all right? Amazing grace. 
How sweet the sound that saves a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace, twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fear. chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing. first. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun, the sun forbear to shine. But God who called me here below will be forever. Tonight, we, in, in the spirit of moving forward as one, we wanted to bring three pastors up to share on how to build, or building, because they're doing it, a culture of prayer, first in your city, then among leaders, and then, or first, in your church, <laughs> in your churches then in your among leaders and then in in your city which how many of you know is very difficult to do all of those things but i want to bring up first a precious man of god that we love uh pastor john butler he comes to us from east rogersville baptist church in east tennessee terry and i love this man because of his and and he and the people that he's a part of because where this is where revival broke out when we had done a, a fast with uh, one of the pastors here in this city, uh, there were about 500 churches in the Middle Tennessee area, and we took it across to our leaders, and they took packets to their churches. So we had a thousand churches fasting and praying. And a week into this fast, uh, we saw a move of the Lord that had nothing to do with Terry and I or, or Pastor John. It was just people coming to the altar and weeping. The first song that we sang, literally. And, and for 30 days, and you may not have even heard about it, uh, CBN did put it out. But um, we, we just kept going. People were saved and baptized every night. And people laying down drugs. And, and their lives were changed. And since then, I, I have seen in this man's church that, that culture of prayer remain how many of you know it's hard for it to remain but this man has helped lead this congregation and continued to do work in east tennessee so uh pastor john come on up barbie thank you so much and one of the things that we learned in the revival was that we need to be obedient to the holy spirit and i'm going to do that right now i, I just got a news report uh, across my phone. I don't know if some of you might have got it, but Iran has just made a direct threat to Israel. 
they will attack Israel. And I think right now, we just need to stop and pray for God's people in Israel. Father, it, it's not that that supreme leader in Iran is doing this. You are doing this because you are a sovereign God and, and in your time you have done these things and you've spoken about them in your word in the past. And we're looking toward that day that Jesus is going to come and your word says that this is going to happen before He comes. But God, we pray for your people in Israel. And God, I pray I don't pray for protection. I don't pray that they'll do anything other than turn to you. God, may they turn to you right now and call on your name. God, they have set you aside for so long. God, I pray. I pray for the leaders. I pray for Benjamin Netanyahu. God, everybody over there is so secular. God, in your word, you say that you're going to do these things so that the nations will know that you are God. And God, I pray that your people, Israel, right now will open their eyes and open their hearts to you. In Jesus' name, amen. I do. I, I just want to. I, I got a couple of things because uh, uh, Representative Fritz kind of mentioned we can't legislate our way out of it, and he's right. And I want to say something. I don't want you to be upset with me, but I'm going to tell you some truths that we need to hear. The reason the state and our country is in the mess that it's in is because the church is asleep, and the church needs to repent. Now, we can sit here and all agree, and we can go back to our lives, but I'm going to tell you, coming out of a church that was asleep and God stirred, I think I understand a little bit about this, and it will not happen until the church repents. How do we create an atmosphere of prayer in our church Truth be known, if you have an hour to an hour and a half long service on Sunday morning, you're probably going to be praying about six to seven minutes in that hour to hour and a half. But yet, when Jesus went into the temple complex and was probably in a place very similar to this, and He fashioned that cord of whips together and He began to overturn the tables of the money changers, what did he say? My father's house shall be a what? A house of preaching. A house of worship. A house of prophecy. He said, my father's house shall be a house of prayer. And prayer is what we do the least in our churches. I've pastored for over 20 years. And God arrested my soul in 2019 right before everything went crazy in my church. And He said this. He said, try me. See. And that one day, in July of 2019, I decided that I wasn't going to tell my people we were going to pray all service. And we pray. And pastor, the people liked it. I didn't stand up and pray for an hour. The people prayed. So I want to I want to share with you. Maybe you're a pastor. Maybe you're just just somebody that's here and a, a faithful member of your church. I want to share with you seven things really quick. And if you need them, I, I, we'll do something to get them to you. But first. Uh, if you're a pastor or a leader in your church, you need to teach on prayer and you need to model prayer. Period. We preach on everything else but prayer. Preach and teach. We have a, we have a prayer uh, teaching session that we do for every new member. We teach people how to pray because we don't expect them to know how because, to be honest, most of us don't. We teach and model prayer. Secondly, pray the Scriptures. Pray the Scriptures. 
And you say, I don't know what to pray. I, I've taught our church from the day I stepped in seven years ago. We open the Bible and we go through and we read two or three verses and then we pray back those verses. Pray the Scriptures. N number three, and, and this is one of the reasons we pray the Scriptures. Number three, we say we avoid perfunctory type prayers. You know what I mean by perfunctory prayers? We, we do them every week. We open with prayer. The worship leader says a prayer somewhere in the middle of the songs. We pray right before the offering and then we pray to close the thing. And we say the same thing every time we get up to pray. Matter of fact, you know it. You can call on this person or this person in your church to pray and you can pray that prayer before they have a chance to. It's the same thing. And that's not what prayer is. That's not what prayer is. So we avoid perfunctory prayers filled with cliches. You know the ones. God bless the giver and the gift. I understand that. But if we can't be any more creative in our grammar, and we don't have any more words, and we got to borrow Uncle Freddie's words to use, prime example, I love my uncle. My uncle came to faith later. I was already a preacher and I would go home to stuff and they would usually ask me to pray because I was the preacher in the family. And my uncle had gotten saved and he prayed before Thanksgiving meal one time. And I had never heard my uncle use King James English until he prayed. All right, do you hear me? I'm not against the King James Version of Scripture, but I grew up in Newport, Tennessee. We didn't talk like that. Okay? Are you here? So we avoid the perfunctory prayers and the cliche prayers. Number four, make prayer central to your church. If you're a pastor here, I want to challenge you sometime in the next month. Would you go back to your church and you don't tell them and you say, we're going to, you set it in your mind, we're going to come in, we'll sing some songs, but I'm not going to preach, we're going to pray. And you say, I don't know how to do that. I didn't either. You know what I did? Here's, here's, a, here's a really quick tip for you. And it still runs through our church today. I said, God, how am I going to do this? Because I just can't pray for an hour. We have, you know that pulpit furniture? I have these four chairs. I pulled them off the stage and put them down in front of the people. And I said this. I taught a little bit, about five minutes or so on prayer. And I said, if you're here this morning and you're hurting, doesn't matter what it is. Maybe there's a diagnosis you're struggling with. Maybe there's some relationship issues. Maybe you're just sick and tired. And you want somebody to pray for you. I want you to come up and sit down in one of these chairs right now. We're not going to do anything else. You just come and sit down in the chair. And I had four chairs laying out. And then I stopped. And I said, oh no. We're done. About a minute or two went by and this one lady got up and she came and sat down in a chair and what happened next was amazing. About 10 people gathered around her and began to pray over her. And before long, all four chairs were full and they would finish praying and they would go back to their seat and somebody else would sit down. And I don't know what they're praying for, but we prayed the rest of the service. It's really that easy. People want to be prayed for and people want to pray for people. So make prayer central to your worship Make prayer active by involving all the senses. We hear things. Play music in your prayer time. You know what? It's okay. I'm Baptist. But I've got a little thing of oil that's got some frankincense in it. And sometimes when people want prayed for, I pull that out. And you know what? The room is full of that fragrance. And people remember it. And people gravitate to that. Use things in your prayer time that involves all of your senses. Uh, number five, make prayer active. Uh, make prayer participatory, participatory in your congregation. One of the things that we do is we have movement in our prayer times. Prayer time shouldn't be a time where everybody just sits there in their pew. So we do chairs. You know, we call them to the altar. And guess what? My men come to the altar before the women do. Just stand up and we gather around people wherever we're at. Make movement in your prayer time so it's not boring. And move people together and have people praying with each other. Number seven is the most important. 
allow God the freedom to move. Because here's what happens. When we're obedient in that, God showed up in our church in a very unusual way. It's a divine visitation. He came and tabernacled with us for, for the whole month of February in, in February 2020. But beyond that, God has continued to work. And I remember um, January 23, or uh, maybe 22, whenever Asbury happened, it was the January just before that. And what happened during our prayer time, we have prayer in a central part of our time. And we began to pray, and a fella came over and said, hey, listen, I've got somebody here we really need to pray over. And I said, well, when they finish the song, we'll pray over them. We pulled the chair out, and we started praying. And I never stepped to the pulpit because God showed up, and people were broken. But what we do is we plan everything. We put everything in its place, and we leave God out. We have to let God have room to move. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor John. And I think he's brought some flyers if you want him to come to your church and, and talk about this. He's been real instrumental in bringing prayer to many other churches. And I want now to, um, how many of you know how hard it is to bring leaders together to pray? <laughs> Gathering pastors and leaders of ministry is not easy, but some people have an anointing for that. And uh, we want to welcome Bishop Anthony Alfred to discuss building a culture of prayer among leaders and pastors. And as he comes up, I just want to say a few things about him. He's the founder of Family and Faith Worship Center in Clarksville. Um, and he's well known for his influence and abilities to gather pastors for prayer and revival for awakening in Montgomery County. Retiring as a command sergeant major at the at Fort Campbell after 30 years in the army he has great compassion and rapport with leaders and we thank God for him we welcome you Bishop yeah. Anthony all right how you doing Tennessee come on clap your hands right now <clears throat> My mission in the next few minutes is to kind of tell you how I galvanize and pull the pastors together. First of all, I, am, I came to a city that I didn't want to come to, but how many know that God will move you against your will? All right. So uh, I come from a city, Clarksville, about 180,000, uh, about 300 plus churches, and about 20% of that is military veterans. So when you're talking about pulling the pastors together, I want to empower you to go back to your city and maybe take something that I would share with you in this recipe in the next three minutes. First of all, amen, all pastors are busy. And they kept telling me they're busy. So I had to go to the dollar store and buy something to unbusy them. I bought a box of puzzles. And I said, you see the front of this box? The front of it represents the vision of God. But the church is inside broken in pieces. What do you think would happen if all of these pieces came together? God's vision can be seen. So once I spent $2 on that little training aid, it kind of got their attention. You're a piece of the puzzle. And you know what I'm looking out here today? Pieces of the puzzle. Is that right? So then I kind of talked about, you know what? I need to clarify. I need to motivate. I need to tell them it's not about denomination. It's not about none of that. It's about the kingdom of God. Okay, I'm going to talk to this side over here. It's about the kingdom of God. Are we the kingdom of God? And I had to slow down and tell them this. God chose you when he had other options. Does that make sense? So in my final two minutes, I'm saying I had to clarify with them. They're coming together. We meet every Saturday on the doorsteps of the Capitol every first Saturday. We've been doing it for four years. But you have to make people believe they are a part of the puzzle. 
And so I, I encourage you to go back to your communities. And you say, I'm a piece of that puzzle. This is who I am. But wait a minute. In the 30 seconds, I want to leave you this because it ain't going to be that easy. What do you do when everything you try for God, it seems like it's not working and your faith is draining? Well, as a school teacher, as an educator, your answer is in the dollar store on, on shelf number six on aisle five. If you go on there, you will find a pack of rubber bands. I'm going to my seat. The next time you feel like you can't go any further, put out, pull out a pack of rubber bands. Take one and say, that's me. What does that mean? I want you to go back from wherever you came from and remember on this ground, God has given us the power to stretch around the situation. Come on and holler, stretch. Stretch. Pastors, let's stretch. God bless you, Bob. Amen. If you want to speak to any of these leaders, you're welcome to contact me and get my uh, their information because I know they would be happy to speak to your pastors. And uh, next we have uh, Pastor Bill Graham. He's such a precious friend. He's a part of our Tennessee Prayer Coalition. So, so are all of these men. But how do you get an entire city praying 24-7 with a commitment and passion? Well, this man right here, Pastor Bill Graham, has succeeded. Can you believe it? So we want him to come and share about building a culture of prayer in your city. He's a pastor at the First Baptist Church in Clarksville and is a mover and a shaker for God, I am telling you, in Montgomery County. Pastor Bill, we love you and Mary Lou so much. Come and share with us. Thank you. This has been an amazing experience. Yes, yes. But we're not to stay here. We got to move on. And what we did in Clarksville, Montgomery County, five years ago, I read the book, A City of Prayer, and began to try to connect the dots with the two authors, Kai Bowman and Trey Kent. They are both pastors in Austin, Texas. The City of Prayer began out of the chaos of a drought in Austin. Ten years ago, they began to meet and to pray. Now they have over a hundred churches taking one day a month, praying 20 Four, seven. So we invited Kai Bowman, Pastor Emeritus of the Hyde Park Baptist Church, to come to our city in January of this year. He had a Friday night and a Saturday morning. We had about a hundred people present for each of those activities. We had 12 churches represented by their pastor or their lay leader. We began after that conference to seek the Lord. In June, we gathered the 12 pastors and we invited other pastors to come. We gave them a copy of the book, A City of Prayer. Today, we have 30 churches praying one day a month for 24 hours now some of the churches are small and they've gathered and they've agreed they'll pray for the first 12 hours and another church will pray for the second 12 hours our church at first baptist takes the second saturday beginning at 8.15 on Saturday morning, and we pray through the night till 7.15 on Sunday morning. However the churches want to use that 24 hours, it's up to them. I would encourage you to get a copy of the book, A City of Prayer, 
and gather pastors in your community, in your city. It's worth the effort. It's worth the sacrifice. May God be praised. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Bill. Such a practical word. And do we need 24-hour prayer in our cities? Do we even have 24-hour prayer in our cities? Folks, we need to take initiative, each one of us, to initiate prayer because that is where the incubator is. That's where it begins. And you know, before I'm going to ask uh, precious sister Grace to come up and uh, read Isaiah 61, Terry and I wanted to encourage us all to see this day, not as the end, as Senator Pody said, and Representative Fritz has also said, but as the beginning of a new day in Tennessee. Repentance and prayer should become a lifestyle, amen? Where we lay down our lives and take up our cross daily to follow Jesus, no matter what the cost. And sometimes it's very costly. We all saw the unity across the whole body of Christ as we gathered in our respective counties across Tennessee this month. We were just in Wilson County. To seek the Lord together, praying prayers of repentance in one voice. Amen? Asking God for His mercy on our state and on our nation. But we, the church, have not always been that way. And you know what? That means that we have needed our hearts softened. Just like Ezekiel 36, 26. Even sometimes broken. Repenting of our own ways to turn back to God's ways. Now as so many are crying out to God together in Tennessee, we can hear even non-believers saying, can you hear it on the news? We need to unite and come together. Even the, the world sees the need our nation has because it's been, it's been being ripped apart by division. So at this very moment in time, we have an incredible opportunity. Church, this is our time. This is the moment to wake up. When Jesus was here on earth, he quoted Isaiah 61 about himself. But now we know the Bible says that we are the body of Christ and we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. So in reality, when we're walking in the Spirit, surrendered to God, we become Jesus' hands and feet with the heart and compassion of the Father. So as Grace reads this well-known scripture, let's ponder how we can start moving forward as one, together doing the works that Jesus did, being an undivided, and powerful force together as we become Jesus with skin on to our hurting and broken world. Will we answer God's call tonight? Yes. Leading the way as Christians in Tennessee, I've heard that said about us from other states. Tennessee is leading the way. Are we leading the way? Amen. Are we going to lead the way? becoming an example to our whole nation of what God can do when a people repent and seek His face and humbly obey His Word. His Word. Grace Swift is a beautiful sister and prayer warrior from Franklin, Tennessee and has written numerous books on prayer called the Sun's Sonship Series, available both in English and Spanish, including books for children. Yay. Please welcome Grace Swift as she reads from God's Word. Tennessee, I get to share with you Isaiah 61 that says the year of the Lord's favor. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me 
because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. Yes. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, all of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called the oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Strangers will shepherd your flocks. Foreigners will work your fields and vineyards, and you will be called the priests of the Lord, and you will be named the ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of nations, and in their riches you will boast. Instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion of and instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. And so, you will inherit a double portion in your land, and everlasting joy will be yours. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness, I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offsprings among the people. All who see them will acknowledge that they are the people the Lord have blessed. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me with robes of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the sprout come up and the garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all the nations beginning right here in the state of Tennessee in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Grace. In just a few minutes, we're going to sing a song that we can all hold hands together. And yet, um, we want to just pray a prayer before that because we've heard so many good messages here from godly leaders. And Paula Gullett, can you please come on up and pray for the humble unity of the body of Christ before we sing about unity? because we need to keep that unity in Tennessee and America. She's from Montgomery County and the Montgomery County prayer group that's been praying for over a decade up there. And we wanna welcome our precious and highly esteemed Paula Gullett. Thank you. Lord, your word says, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Father, you have, have a con you have had a controversy with our nation. You tell us in Jeremiah 2 that your people have committed two evils. They have forsaken you, the spring and fountain of living water, and we have dug for ourselves cisterns, cisterns that can hold no water. But oh God, you are a merciful God. You are a forgiving God. Your kindness leads us to repentance. And you say, return to me and I will return to you. Father, you are asking the question today in our world, Psalms 94, 16, you said, who will rise up for me against 
the evil doers and who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity. Father, our state leaders are answering that call, Father. And we are saying, as Jeremiah said so many centuries ago, here are we, Lord. Send us. Use us. You always work in partnership with man. And Lord, just as when the children of Israel were in bondage in Egypt and you saw their affliction, you heard their cry for help, and you were moved to action on their behalf. I believe you are doing that for your people today. Father, as I also am from Clarksville, Montgomery County, and have been in prayer groups of all different kinds and configurations and in my church for over 50 years, praying for our nation, you reminded me about the heritage and the beginnings of the state of Tennessee. Clarksville founded in 1784 and Nashville a little bit before that. But the settlers in our area were known that there were three items they considered absolutely essential to their well-being. The first was a rifle to protect them from the Indians and to provide food for their family. The second was an axe, axe to clear the land and build houses for them. But the third was the most important. It was your precious word, the Bible, which was given to quote them for their illumination and for the instruction of their children, Father. So this is the heritage of the state of Tennessee. That is why the state of Tennessee today is rising up to your call. And we are carrying forth, we are a mighty army of believers, anointed by your precious Holy Spirit. May your Holy Spirit rest upon us the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And we say tonight, as the Apostle Paul has said, not that we count that we have apprehended all for which we have been apprehended, but this one thing we do, we press on toward the goal for the prize of the high call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Well, thank you all for coming out on a warm Nashville night. Uh, we're about to end, but as we end this time together, I'd like to invite all of our participant leaders to come and stand up here with Barbie and I. We need each other, brothers and sisters. We do. During these volatile times, we all need a reminder that our enemies are not people. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of this dark world. So our true enemy is the devil himself. One of the meanings of that name devil is to divide without cause. You get that? To divide without cause. As you know, he's really good at it. But all alone, none of us are any match for the devil's power and strategies. But with God's Spirit in us, humbly join hand in hand with each other, the family of God. There is no force of darkness that can overcome us. Amen. There's power in the blood. So if you're able and willing tonight, would you stand up right now and join hands with your brother and brothers and sisters in Christ that are standing next to you, symbolizing that we will stand as one body moving forward together in the coming weeks and months, just like God has taught us to, so that the world will know that we are Christians by our love. It's a song of unity that Barbie and I wrote. the heart.
heartbeat of our nation who holds us in his hands he's the lord of all creation and before him now we stand you're the alpha and omega no one can stop your plan fulfilling jesus prayer for us surrounding this great as one we stand, we appeal to heaven's throne. This is your land. It belongs to you alone. Hand in hand, we declare Jesus is Lord. As one we stand, we worship you. generation we humbly bow to you if there's a cry in all our hearts for you love we know is true confessing our complacency and the idols we have made we call to you for mercy Lord please heal our Before we leave this place, I'd like to ask all of the government officials to come forward, if you would. Stand right here in front of us. Both, uh, pray for God's protection in the days ahead. Those of you that are prayer warriors know what I'm talking about. Okay? We don't we don't want the backlash. We don't want that. So we pray against it. And just, uh, Pastor O. Hallelujah. As we're praying, uh, I, the Lord gave me a word for our leaders before we pray. Uh, this day, the favor of the Lord is coming afresh upon you. And the way he showed it to me says, 
when the handwriting of the enemy was against the Jews, God raised people from the government. He raised Mordecai and Esther. They called for a three days time of prayer and fasting. At the end of the three days prayer and fasting, the next step Esther took, the Bible says he found favor with the king. And from that favor, everything started shifting for the glory of God. So the Lord is saying to you today, on this day, because you've called the state to a time of prayer and fasting for a whole month, his heart is moved. And the favor of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is upon you, is upon the state. And truly, as it's been said, this state will lead the way. Because the favor of God is upon you. And you begin to see something you've never seen because you've touched the heart of God in crossing the line that would have cost you. Because you've stepped beyond the line most people will not step. God's favor will take you beyond your expectation. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this month. On this month, 1776, July 4th, you laid the foundation of a great nation and you called it to a time of independence. Father, I thank you on this July, you have reversed the foundations and you started with this state. You started with the Mordecai and Esther's of our day. Today we thank you that it's not the church, but the government has made a decree that they want you. So Father, the government that is upon your shoulders, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, come upon them, rest upon them. Let your favor, let your glory, let your anointing, let the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, rest upon them. The government of the Lord flowing through them. The wisdom of the Lord flowing through them. The protections of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Give them dreams from heaven. Give them wisdom, strategic wisdom. Because you have begun something in this month. Father, give them or show us the next step. And we choose to give you the glory. Father, we pray right now a blessing upon their wives, upon their children, upon their families. Because Esther crossed a line that would have caused death. You decided to give favor for life. And you gave it to the whole nation. Father, because of their obedience, remember them for good. Remember their family, their children. Father, bless them indeed. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. From this day forward, Tennessee is on your heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 One more. One more. Judge, do you mind? Hey, this gentleman opened up his courtroom to us because it was raining. And I understand he's caught some flags from the enemy. So we want to lay hands on him and just ask God to save him. Hey, uh, this gentleman opened up his courtroom to us uh, a few days ago because it was raining cats and dogs. And I understand he's faced some attacks from that. So we're going to ask him if we can just lay hands on him and pray. Mike, will you pray again? And uh, Anthony, will you pray? Come on. Let's lay hands on this man and pray. We anoint him now. Father God, we know you're in control. And you got this. We lay hands upon your servant right now. You put a hedge around him right now. No weapon formed against him shall prosper. Greater is he that is in this man than he that will come against him. In the name of Jesus, if God be for us, who can be against us? He opened up the courtroom, God. You've already touched his heart. But today he's standing on good ground. In the name of Jesus, move every evil attack. In the name of Jesus, let no harm come upon him. In the name of Jesus, we thank you already. We thank you now for what you're going to do. Let him run his course in the name of Jesus. 
in Jesus' name, it's done. Let the church say amen. Well, we thank you for coming. I got two things, okay? The lady that's right over here that's dressed in the white outfit, she is with Christian Broadcasting Network, uh, CBN. I came all the way from Virginia, and they kind of captured tonight. So be sure to thank her and her crew uh, that's here from locally, a great camera crew. And then the other thing is this. If you would like to have the coldest bottle of ice water you've ever had in your life, I rolled some coolers out here. I got them. Take one home. It'll make it easier to take home. <laughs> God bless you.